Hey, welcome to Yodit's table. Today we'll be making this kacha fut fut with sulzi. It's video five of nine of our Tzom series that's posted every Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Kacha is typically eaten for breakfast. I personally like it throughout the day. And of course, there's different variations of this, but this is a vegan friendly slash Tzom friendly dish since it has not asmi aka ghee or clarified butter so if you want to learn how to make this please stay tuned catch you in a jiffy so in order to get started with our kacha fut fut with zilsi these are all the ingredients we'll be needing so here i have two cups of flour two cups of water a half an onion chopped three roma tomatoes that have been blended one tablespoon of barbera, half a jalapeno chopped, four cloves of garlic minced. We'll also be using our avocado oil and we'll be needing an additional cup of water and some salt to taste. Alrighty, let's get to it. First things first, wash your hands. Secondly, what we'll be doing is adding our flour to a bigger bowl. And you want to add some salt, so I'm going to use approximately one teaspoon of salt, and this will be to taste. And so we can start off with a teaspoon and then adjust accordingly. And so I'm going to just add a little bit of water at a time. And you want to give this a nice mix. You're really looking for a super smooth texture. And so by adding the water a little bit at a time, you can kind of gauge the amount of water you'll be needing overall. Make sure you're getting all of the dry bits into your mixture. Once you've reached about this point, you can go ahead and add a little bit more water and continue to mix. Alrighty, so this is about the texture that we're looking for. We want it to be on the thicker end. It's pretty sticky, but of course, all of the dry bits have been incorporated. There are a few little lumps in, as you can see, but that's okay because it'll cook out as we are putting this on our pan. And so for now, we're gonna wash our hands and set this aside. So for the amount of flour, I actually wound up using only about a cup of water. And so again, that'll be up to your discretion to decide how thick you want this. Alrighty, we'll be back. Next, we're gonna get started on our sultsi. So we'll turn our burner on to a medium high heat. I have my burner on about a three and a half and we're gonna toss our onions into our pan. We're gonna allow these to saute a bit, allow some of the moisture to be absorbed, and then we'll add our oil. Once our onions sweat out a bit and are starting to stick to the bottom, we know it's time to add some oil. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of some avocado oil. We're gonna allow our onions to cook out some more and become nice and soft and get a little bit of color on them. So my onions got away from me a little bit. This is entirely fine. They're not burnt. They are, they just have a little bit more color than I had desired, but we'll just rock with it. So at this point, we'll go ahead and add our garlic. You wanna give this a nice mix and wait about 30 seconds until you start to smell your garlic. And we can also add in our jalapenos. So once we've sauteed that a bit, we're gonna go ahead and add our barbara. And we want that raw barbara taste and the spices to be cooked out. And so we'll spend a couple minutes just allowing this to cook. Once this has cooked out a bit, I'm gonna add a little bit more water and just allow this to really soften. And once the water is absorbed, then we can add our tomatoes. And do note that the amount of barbara that you use will depend on your spice level, how hot the barbara is, and if you don't know what barbara is, it's a spice mixture that can be found at your local Eritrean or Ethiopian market. So once the water has been absorbed, I'm gonna go ahead and just toss our tomatoes in. And you can use canned tomatoes if you like. I prefer fresh tomatoes, but if you have the cans on hand, then by all means, use what you have. I'm also gonna add a cup of water and just give this a good mix. At this point, I'm gonna put a lid on it and put it on the back burner and we'll make our kacha while this is cooking. So for our kacha, what we'll need to do is turn our burner on to a medium high heat and we'll also be adding a little bit of oil to the pan. 
you want to take a paper towel and just spread that out a bit. And you also want to have a little bit of water off to the side to be able to dip your hand into some water so that way the mixture doesn't stick to your hand thoroughly. So once our pan is nice and hot, we're gonna go ahead and add some of the mixture to our pan. And depending on your pan size, you can probably get one or two out of this. And so I'm gonna pop that in. And you can hear that it's ready because of the sizzle. And again, dip your hand in the water. And you wanna move pretty quickly and just kind of mix this out, or spread this out rather. So once everything is spread out nice and evenly, I'm gonna just put a lid on it and allow that to cook for approximately, I would say three to four minutes. You'll know that it's ready when the top of the mixture has dried out a bit. And like I said, you can definitely get two out of that. So there goes half of my mixture and here's the other half. All right, so it's been a couple minutes and we'll take the lid off. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see that most of it has dried off. And so I'm gonna take my spatula and just flip this on over. And that's exactly what we're looking for. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on and allow that to cook for another three to four minutes. Alrighty, so we're gonna take our lid off and flip this over. And that's perfect, that's what we're looking for. And at this point, we'll just go ahead and take a plate and set this aside and allow this to cool. In the meantime, we'll repeat the steps. While our second gacha is going, what we're gonna go ahead and do is get started and tear this up. You wanna tear this up into bite-sized pieces. And if you have hands like our mom, it's pretty hot, but just go with the flow. And if not, wait um, until it cools down entirely. So, alrighty, so this is what your gacha should look like after you're done tearing it into pieces. So we'll do the same thing for the second one once it's cooled down and we'll be back. So while our second gacha is cooling off, we're gonna go ahead and check on our salty. And so we're gonna give this a nice little mix. And that looks great. This is exactly what we're looking for. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add some salt. And since I know my barbetta does not have any salt, I'm gonna add, start off with one heaping teaspoon of salt and give this a nice mix and make sure you taste this to see if there's enough salt to your liking and that was the perfect amount of salt for that and so at this point we can turn down our heat entirely so i have my burner on a low so now that our kitchen is all nice and ready we're gonna go ahead and just put this in to our pan or our pot rather And once everything is in the pot, we'll give this a nice mix. And we want this to really be submerged into our sozi. We want a nice soft texture. So we'll allow this to cook for approximately two or three minutes until it's to your liking. So once everything is nice and combined and the kacha has softened a bit, we're gonna turn off our heat and just serve this up. Otherwise, there you have it our kacha fitfit with salsi. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Peace, until next time.